In this session, we are going to introduce sets as another fundamental collection type. We are then going to combine sets and four expressions in a classical combinatorial search problem, namely the N Queens problem. So far, all the collection that we've seen were sequences of some sort or another. But there are actually also two other uh, fundamental class of collections. One is sets and the other is map. In this session, we're going to take a closer look at sets. Sets are actually very close to sequences. You form sets just like sequences, so you could write fruit equals set of apple banana pears, let's say, or s equals one two six dot two set. So two set is an operator that takes a sequence and converts the sequence to a set. Most operations on sequences are also available on sets. So you could write s map underscore plus two, and then you would expect to see a set that goes from 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Or you could write fruit filter, where uh, the fruit must start with APP, so that would give us a set of just apples. Or you could ask whether a set is non-empty, say. All these operations are shared between sequences and sets. To find the complete set of operations, you could look in the class iterable, the common superclass of second sequence, and find all the operations that are supported there. Or you go and look up the operations in class set, and you'll find, in addition, the operations specific to sets. So the principal differences between sets and sequences are three. The first one is that sets are unordered. That means the element of a set do not have a predefined order in which they appear in the set. The second difference is that sets do not have duplicate elements. If I would map the set from going from 1 to 6 with the function that divides each element by 2, I would obtain the set that contains elements 0, 1, 2, 3. So this a set of six elements has just shrunk to four elements because duplicates were removed. And the third operation is where in a sequence the fundamental operations would be head and tail for lists or indexing for vectors. For set the fundamental operation is contains. So the principal operation that you can do with a set is asking whether there is an element in the set. So let's now use uh, that data structure and what we've seen so far in a somewhat more involved problem that highlights very well the uh, techniques that you could apply to combinatorial search. The problem is a well-known one. So you start with a chessboard, um, eight by eight rows normally. I will draw a smaller version with just four by four. And the problem is to place queens into every row of the chessboard such that none of the queens is threatened by another. So one way to do that here would be to place a queen here and here and here and here. So now we want to develop a solution for chessboards of any size, not just four or eight. One way to solve the problem would be to place a queen in each row. So we start with the first row, place a queen there, then place a queen in the second row, and so on. Once we've placed a number of queens, we must check for the next queen in the column uh, that it does not threaten any of the other queens, so that it sits in its own column and it doesn't threaten the other queens by following a diagonal. That leads to an algorithm for solving the problem. The algorithm is recursive. It says, suppose that we've already generated all the solutions consisting of placing k-1 queens on a board of size n. First question is how do we represent each solution? So the idea there is we would just represent it by a list of length k-1 obtaining the numbers of columns between 0 and n-1. So let's see in this example how that would work. So I number rows and columns from 0, something like that. And then the solution of my first three queens would be the list of saying the last queen that I've placed, that was the uh, queen in the row 2, that column was 0, 
The one before that I've placed was the queen in column 3. And the first queen I've placed in the zero row had column 1. So that would be a partial solution of the three queens. I can then complete it to a full solution by adding another queen in this uh, column 2 that I've seen here. So that solution would evolve to the solution 2031 that you've seen on the board. But of course, in general, there can be more solutions or none at all. So we're dealing not with a single solution here, but with sets of solutions. So let's put this into an actual Scala program. Uh, I've opened a new worksheet, call it nQueens, and I've given you already the signature of this queens method that finds all solutions to place n queens on a chessboard of n rows. So the input to queens would be the number of rows of our chessboard and the output would be a set of solutions and each solution is a list of int, the one we've seen. So to implement the queens method we use a recursive algorithm with an auxiliary method called it place queens, which places a number k of queens to, on the board and produces the set of solutions. So the initial call would be place queens n, which means we place all n, want to place all n queens. So now we've reduced the problem to how to implement place queens. Well, let's deal with the boundary case first. If k equals zero, so we don't need to place any queen, what do we return? Well, you might be tempted to say return the empty set of solutions, but that's actually not quite right. Because if we're not asked to do anything, that there is a solution, namely, don't do anything. So that means uh, we return just the empty list as our solution here. Okay, so that was the case where k equals zero. So now in the case where k is greater than zero, we have to do some real work. So what do we need to do? So in general, uh, we have to, to place k queens. We first have to solve the subproblem of placing k minus one queen. So we call this four queens coming from place queens k minus one. So that was the this, this set of our partial solutions returned by place queens k minus one, and we let queens range over it. Now the second thing we have to check for is we have to put our k queen into a certain column. And we will simply try all the possible columns. So we would say the column ranges from 0 until n. But we can't place the queen in any column we please because we still have to check that it doesn't threaten any other queen. So we put a test in there, a filter, which says that the column for the queen is safe with respect to the previous queens. And if it is, then we can yield a new solution. What would that solution be? Well, it would be our partial solution here, augmented by the queen in the new column. So it would be column followed by queens. So that gives the outline of our solution. There's still one thing to do, namely define this method is safe. So I would like you to do that as an exercise. So the exercise for you is to write a function is safe that takes a column for a new queen and an existing solution, call it queens, and returns a boolean indicating whether it's safe to put the new queen in the given column. It's assumed, of course, that the new queen is placed in the next available row after all the other placed queen. So let's see how we would solve this. I've already given you the signature of is safe in the worksheet. The thing to do is work on its implementation. The first thing I want to do is I want to add rows to all the queens that we look at here. So the row of the queen to be placed. Let's call it row. So that would be simply queens.length, because the other queens are in row 0 to row minus 1. The next thing I want to do is I want to also add a row to each of these queens, so transforming the list of ints to, into a list of pairs of row and columns. 
So what I want to do is, let's say, if I have a solution uh, list of um, 0, 3, 1, partial solution, then I want to transform that into a solution that adds the rows. So the uh, first element was actually the last row to be placed, so that was row 2. So I would get 2, 0, 1, 3, and 0, 1. So I want to go from here to here. How could we do that? So the idea here is that we use a zip with a range. So the range that we want to apply here would be the range that goes from row minus 1 to 0 by minus 1 steps. And that sequence we zip with the list of our queens. And we call that with row. So that would be now the pa partial solution of queens represented with rows. So what we can do now is we can simply check whether the queen at row, row and column, column here is in check with any of these here. So that would be a, a for all. For all of these queens, it must be that the new queen is not in check. So when we go through these uh, partial solutions, they're all pairs. So let's immediately take the row and the column out of the pair. And now comes our check. So what do we need to check here? Well, the first is, of course, that the current column is not the same as any of the columns of the previous screen. So that would be call different or from Z. And uh, the next, the other thing to check is that the queen is also not in check over any of the diagonals. What that means is that the absolute difference between the two columns, so call that math.abs uh, call minus C, must not be the same as the absolute difference between the two rows. So that's row minus r, because in this case we know that row is always bigger than r. So in that case, if that predicate is true, then we know that the queen is not in check over any of the diagonals with the queen in rc. So that's our definition of is safe. Let's try to test this with a, a simple example. Let's just run queens of four and see what we get. So what we get is a list of two solutions, 1, 3, 0, 2, and 2, 0, 3, 1. And if you look at it, then uh, it seems that the two solutions are both correct, but it's better to actually visualize this. So as a last step, I would like to add a component that shows all solutions as actual chessboards. So let's try to do that. I've put up a function here called show that takes a solution and will print it as a chessboard. You can see that immediately how it would work. Um, let's call queens of four, but now map with show. So for each of the solutions, we want to see it as a chessboard. So that's what we get. We get a set of solutions. And each solution is a four-line string. So here in this uh, rectangle, you see the first one. And in this rectangle, you see the second one. And as you see, yes, it's true that none of the x's, which, which represent the queens, is in check with each of the other. So they all are in their own column, in their own row, and none of them are on the same diagonal. So let's have a quick look how we printed the queens here. So what I did is I had a list of lines. And that's just essentially I took the solution, but I reversed it because we know that in the solution later queens come first. So we let the columns range over queens.reverse. And then for each of uh, these rows, I had to produce the string that consists of asterisks and uh, the x where the queen is. So the first thing I did was I produced a vector with n elements uh, that each read star and a space. 
and then I use the updated call at the column to replace the star and the space with an x and the space. And then I converted the whole vector of string elements to a string. There's a handy utility function for, for that. Make string will take any collection and simply print out all the elements in the collection one after the other. So that was how we converted a single line to a string. To actually show a whole chessboard, the idea is that we have to show each line and we have to separate them by new line characters. So that's another usage of this make string, which is a function that can also take a second argument. In that case, it will print each line separated by uh, the, the second operand here. So in that case that we've seen here, lines would be separated by new lines. And I preceded by an additional new, new line character. So that's what you saw here. We can even make this uh, somewhat nicer by saying uh, instead of the scaffolding with the set here, I just want to convert it directly into a make string and uh, I want to convert sets maybe by another new line character like that. So let's see what that would give. So now I have the solutions in a nicer way, each sep nicely separated by blank lines. Let's play with it a little bit. If we have sol uh, queens of eight, uh, then uh, we will probably get too many solutions. Yeah, that's a whole, that's a whole lot of solutions that we get here. So what we do instead is let's take the first three, and there we, you would have all the uh, solutions of size eight. And inspecting each of them, you see that, yes, indeed, it's, it is a solution. 